Madam Chair. I call the other four. Um, usually, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to uh, make a few rebuttals of the previous speaker, um, Simon O'Connor. But I, I, can't at this, I can't at this point because actually I fell asleep halfway through because he was so poor, and I didn't hear what he had to say in the last half. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go back to the to the pre. A point of order, uh, Simon O'Connor. I seek the leave of the house to repeat my last two contributions for the benefit oh. of that member. <laughs> So, I'm sure if I sought that leave, it would not be a so, so what I'll do, Madam, Madam uh, Chair, is to... Let me, uh, let me call the member. Sorry? Thank you. Derek, oh, I just didn't think that was a point of order at all, Madam Speaker, so it's <laughs> Madam Chair, so I was just carrying on. Well, that's... I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah, I'm I'm sorry the, that yeah. is not for you to determine. Yeah. Derek Ford. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So what I'll do is I'll carry on uh, with my previous story, because it was a good story about Lawrence Yule and what he was saying and the quoting that he was making. Because it does highlight an important point. It does highlight an important point about the social investment approach and the amount of cooler that, that he has obviously consumed. In the same speech that he gave, he used two different, two different definitions of what the social investment approach was, um, and he didn't even know it. And he didn't even know it. So the first thing he said was, for a small, for a small number of families, a massive investment by the state and caring in a wraparound set of services would have been far better than a broad spectrum approach. Now that's what they want people to understand the social investment approaches was. Uh, social investment approaches. He also said that the, the, the that side of the chamber would proudly champion that through this term of the government, and when they get back in government, because it's the best way of supporting my children, their children, and all of New Zealand's children. So that's according to them what the social investment approach definition is. And then in the same sentence, actually, he said, the right honourable. Uh, Bill English saw that and saw the cost to the state, the nation and us as taxpayers if it wasn't done properly. That is the absolute foundation and basis for which they are actually create, have created the social investment approach and how they implement it. They are hiding behind smoke and mirrors around the definitions about what's best for the children, what's best for the country, but when it boils down to it, all it is is about fiscal liability to the state. Fiscal liability to the state. Do you know what backs up my comments? How do they measure them, or how do they want, or how did they measure them? Better public service targets. How, how more blunt of a tool can you get than a target that someone has to meet, and if they don't meet it, that's it? On your bike. If they don't meet it, that's it. On your bike, down the road. So they measure success in very isolated silos. Then we can start talking about data collection and, and information gathering and things like that and how poor that has been around the social services around the world. But they use better public service targets than they used to to put pins in the map or on the graph about how well and how much money they are saving as a state long term. Saving as a state long term. And yet the members themselves can't actually hide behind the smoke and mirrors for too long before the truth comes out. Just like Lawrence Yule said, it's about how much it costs to the state, costs to the nation, as us as taxpayers, if it's not done properly. And what the best thing, the only thing that one needs to do, Madam Chair, is to look at some, some research about what the social investment approach is, especially in New Zealand and how it was conducted. This is, I'm going to quote from Dr. Simon um, Chappell, uh, who was a senior economist in public policy role, held public policy roles in New Zealand and abroad. Uh, Department of Labor and Ministry of Social Development. Now, he, he, his definition of what the social investment approach is, uh, it's the key unifying feature is managing and incentivizing the welfare system in terms of reducing the future fiscal liability. Reducing the fiscal future liability. So it's got nothing to do with what's best for the children or what's best for the degenerations or, or um, how many people they can get off a benefit and what's best for those individuals. It's all about reducing the future fiscal liability. And it's not Bill English's fault, because Bill English was a businessman and he, and he represents big business and small business, and that's how they, they run a business. It's all about commodities, it's all about profits, it's all about how you can make more money. It's not about the people and all of the wraparound issues that go with them. The wraparound issues go, that go with them. He goes on to talk about the better public service targets. If you look at the government's relevant better public service goal, 
the performance target is about reducing the fiscal liability on the welfare system and the number of beneficiaries. Ms. Madam Chair? Madam Chair? I call Jan Logie. Madam Chair, um, pleased to take a call, um, part one.